Hello and welcome to Art Online. My guest today is the amazing Jenny Folds. Hi, Jenny. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good, Jenny. Jenny, we know each other for 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 ages now, and um, we actually know each other from the street art scene, bizarrely enough. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be talk we're going to be talking today about your poetry because you're also um, uh, you're a poet and you've been doing a lot of uh, online uh, poetry jams with your your Re Rebel Soapbox program. Yeah. So I thought I just wanted to ask you about that, really. Oh gosh, um, well, what do you want to know? I mean, it's kind of um, it's funny because I mean, when we knew each when we met each other, I was doing Happy Graffiti, mm. um, and that gosh, like I haven't been doing that for about five years, four years. So I kind of started about eight that about eight years ago. So yeah, we've known each other for quite a while. I know, and you you, you even wrote a book, didn't you? Yeah, Your yeah, happy yeah. Happy graffiti a, book. Happy graffiti book. Um, yeah, that was like a bit of a whirlwind. It was really unexpected. Um, I mean, it didn't it didn't do so well in the shops, but at the same time, it's kind of I, I got a book made. You know, it was kind of like it was like a nice achievement. You know, that's pretty cool. I mean, you know. That that's not bad, is it? Really, to say that you're a published author. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know how the fuck that happened. In, in, in the street art <laughs> scene, not something you're even that involved in anymore. So, I mean, even better. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, totally. But do you know what? That it kind of um, it put me in quite good stead. Uh, not the book, just Happy Graffiti. It was really nice to meet so many different kinds of people. Um, I made some great friends from it. Um, kind of in, within the scene. Um, but actually, I kind of started Happy Graffiti and um, it grew arms and legs. It was actually about nice things that people wrote on walls, but it was like more like toilet walls and like, um, you know, it's like positive vandalism, mm -hmm. right? So it was like, ah, guys, I'm really sorry. I've just drawn on your wall, but it's a really nice message. So don't worry about it, you know. Um, but then it kind of shifted and changed into kind of more artist based stuff and um, murals and you know, like lots of type stuff. And uh, it shifted so much that actually I didn't really recognize it by the end of it. So I, I didn't really know where my place was within that kind of scene. I think that, I think there were so many blogs happening by the time I stopped doing it. But when I first started doing it, there weren't that many. So it kind of felt a bit, uh, kind of um, saturated for photo blogs. I don't, mm -hmm. know, I, don't know if, I don't know how you feel about that. What do, what do you think? I, I, th I think at the time when you were doing Happy Graffiti, and um, so we, we are going back some time, we sort of, yeah, yeah, I think, so I'm thinking around 2012, 2014 times, something yeah. like that. There was, there was a lot going on on the street art scene, a lot of photographers, a lot of blogs. Now I think it's really died down, if I'm honest. But then I think that's because the scene in London has died down and it's gone, I think, well, I think it's spread out. I think it's spread its wings. I think you see more national street art now i think you see more international street art but actually within the bubble that is london the spots mm -hmm. have gone so the photographers just aren't as active and the bloggers aren't as active or they've dropped off and you know i think it's just um it's like so it's just a few of us now i think still recording but yeah, yeah, yeah. we're recording different things yeah but the thing the, the thing about the stuff you do is it was more about the um the people and the stories behind it mm, and that's, that's right what, and which which I, it was a really nice way to look at it because it wasn't just, you know, I think for me, I was like taking a photo, like giving some kind of quip, you know, it, but it, there, weren't, there weren't many kind of doing what I was doing when I first started doing it. But then, yeah, as even within a year of starting to do it, there was just so many people doing it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. but the, the good thing, the, the lovely thing um, about what you do is, you kind of go behind what's been painted and talk to people, you know, kind of an understanding of why artists have kind of started doing it or like, you know, I, I just exactly. I think you do something different to a lot of other people. I think, I think probably like Hook's blog is probably mm. quite similar. Um, yeah, Hook's blog gets to know the, 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 the people behind the scenes as well, really mm -hmm. spends a lot of time with them. And I think that's the thing, isn't it? You know, if you, for me, it's a, it's a personal, you know, it's a personal thing. It's uh, people, you know, you know, you create, you're creating art for everyone to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
you know, people interact with this stuff all the time. So, you know, I want to know about that person doing that and, and giving their time to, <laughs> and energy, days sometimes to create these magnificent works. Uh, but also, but what's interesting though, I think, is because like, you know, Happy Graffiti for me was such a personal project. It was not about money. It wasn't about making hmm. a book. It was, it was, it, it, I, I love the idea of like, someone just writing something for nothing other than the joy like the joy of someone see someone else seeing it and it brightening their day or like you know i think now what happens is people paint something or do a paste up or do a stencil and they'll and their their tag will be on there yeah. for instagram you know so it's quite kind of it's about instagram followers rather mm -hmm. than just pure joy of like someone seeing something going oh that's funny i like that you know mm -hmm. yeah um, so yeah, I think it's kind of shifted quite a lot. It's def it's definitely shifted, but you know, different. Yeah, it, 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 I mean, but into different space, uh, just a different yeah, yeah, space. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And I'm not. Yeah, I'm, I'm not by no means preparing it. I'm just saying it's kind of for me, like my space, my space in, my space in that scene was that, and I'm not sure. It's quite hard to find your kind of. Space. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Mean, I've obviously shifted on to some other things. Now. I know, and exciting stuff as well, because yeah. your poetry is really what you seem to be focusing on, and I'm seeing it everywhere. I mean, your Rebel Soapbox um, work looks and is fantastic. So, so tell me how you got into the poetry uh, side um, of things. Well, I mean, you know, it was. Um, I actually only started writing a few years ago, and um, the reason I had started writing, well, one, I was an actor for years, so I was an actor for about fifteen years, and then I hadn't performed in about ten years. Um, um, I'd kind of ha hung up my boots. I was like, I'm not going to do that anymore. And then, have you ever been to a Burns Night? Aye, yes, of course. Aye, many, many. <laughs> um, well, you know, within, in a Burns night, the tradition is there's an address to the lassies, the, a, a man addresses the women, and there's an address to the laddies, and the woman addresses the men. So my friend was helping to run this Burns night, and she was like, you know, would you come and do the address to the laddies? And I'm like, oh, God, no, I'm, I've not performed in years. I've never really written anything before. And she's like, can you just, like, give it a go? Like, see if you, like, enjoy it? Like, just try. And I'm like, right. I'll give it a go and if I like what I'm doing then I'll I'll kind of stick with it so I started writing it and then I was like I really enjoyed writing it and I was like yeah do you know what I'm gonna I'm just gonna go for this um got to the night there was like 150 people there and then did this like address to the to the laddies um my friend filmed it and we put it on Facebook and it was like got 15,000 views um I ended up I've got a life coach. I know that's very millennial of me. <laughs> I've got a life coach. Well, it is 2020. Um, well, it is. And, um, <laughs> um, but he, he was really like, um, he really, he was amazing. He, he helped me go from, oh God, I've not performed in 10 years. I can't get my head around that. I was actually kind of, by the, by the time I'd given up my acting stuff, I, the acting, giving up the acting stuff kind of broke my heart a little bit. So I had a lot of like weird feeling about performing um but he really helped me and he was like it was all a lot about self-belief and like you know um just getting up there and performing again um and he challenged me every time i have a call with him he's like he always he always gives me a call at the end of the call and he's like right you have to send that video to five uh, spoken word nights or comedy nights oh. and see what comes back and i'm like Oh, right. Okay. Well, I ended up sending it to one spoken word night and I'm now a, a resident performer for them. Like they're my, like, I'm, a, I'm part of this collective now. Um, so it kind of grew arms and legs from that. And um, I, I started performing um, at different nights over London. Um, I ended up doing the address to the laddies for Nicola Sturgeon at her Burns night. Did last you? Year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not know that. That's a bit of a claim to fame. Yeah, totally. I was wow. delighted. Yeah, so I ended up doing that, the same one, um, at her Burns night, um, uh, which was brilliant. Um, and then I've just kind of kept writing since then. And um, and then I started Rebel Soapbox. Do you know Lisa Richer? Yeah, yes, I know Lisa, yeah. So they were doing, um, they were doing um, a lot of uh, creative stuff for uh, Macmillan Cancer. Mm -hmm. 
uh, cancer, um, is it Macmillan Cancer Support, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's all research, um, yeah, I think one of them. Yeah, and um, uh, she asked me whether I would do a spoken word night for, for that, for that kind of series of creative um, events. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. So called it Rebel Soapbox, raised, you know, like 300 quid for Macmillan. And then I was then they were like, well, why don't you just do it every month here? So this was at Monty's, it was when Steve was at Monty's. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I've done it, I've, I've, I just, I've just kind of carried it on. And it's been really, it's been brilliant. I mean, obviously at this time, we can't have the nights, but um, I've been like selling out every, I mean, I've only been going, I think I've only done like five or six nights, but sold out everyone. Yeah. Um, and I'm getting like about five or six feature performers and then eight open micers coming in to perform. Um, and it's brilliant. It's just like, it's amazing to see like so much talent, like, and it's nice to host as well. It's kind of, it's nice to like, yeah, you, you get like, regulars in. It's yeah, I really love it. And it's, it's um, the good, the lovely thing about doing spoken word is versus acting is, you know, with acting you, I mean, I didn't consider myself a creative person until I was in my mid thirties. And that's five years after I start, stopped acting right because for me when I was acting there was a there was a level of um there was something missing that you're you know you're being told where to stand you're being told what mm -hmm. to say you're kind of waiting beside the phone for someone else to give you the job you know it's very much out of your hands whereas with spoken with the spoken words I'm kind of writing my own work I'm performing it. I've got my own night. You know, it's like, it's just it feels like I've got more control over it, so I can kind of see where it goes. It sounds sure? like it's a, there's a there's an authenticity coming out for you that yeah. you're more you're feeling more authentic within yourself when you're writing your poetry. You're performing that and and hosting yeah, your night. Yeah, absolutely. And also, do you know it's it's quite um, the spoken word scene is is not dissimilar to the street art scene in in the kind of people that you meet. You know, it's like it's that kind of tight knit. Like it's a little family. You get to know loads of people. You, you perform with loads of the same people. Um, you you get to know people really well very quickly because you know you're you're having these shared experiences and you know also there's the element of nerves. You know if you're performing if you're performing at a night and of course um, you know everyone's kind of feeling a little bit nervy or whatever. Like you know it's kind of like you're you're in it together and it's 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 lovely. It's a really nice scene. Yeah, and it's at and it's at Monty's Bar. That's that's the, the, where you were saying earlier. That's on the, br the Brick Lane, on the, in the uh, the bottom of it. It has been at Monty's. I think we're kind of, we're kind of looking at trying to maybe get a new home because um, it's growing. I mean, we yeah. can only get need more space. We can only get forty five or fifty people in Monty's downstairs. So I think probably we're going to try and get another venue to kind of grow it. So so yeah. So how, how have you managed to move it online? So we've had a lockdown and you've been t taking these sessions online. How have you managed to do that? And how have they, how, how's it gone? I mean, it's, it's good. I mean, the, 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 prop, the issue with online and, I, and I've been speaking to, uh, I spoke to my friend, Roberta Pia, who's a singer, um, is for performers or for creatives, it's kind of a bit of a step back because what's happening is, you know, for so many years, we've been banging the drum to say, pay your creatives, pay your artists, pay, you know, all this stuff. There's so many, there's so much free shit going on. Online. There's a lot, yes, yes. And people are just putting their, like, you know, their PayPal thing going, donate whatever you feel you want to, you know. So it's kind of a step back from the whole, pay your creatives, you know, like, you know, all this thing. But however, in saying that, the the beauty of it is the reach that you get mm. because rather than you know being in London and just having um London based performers and a London audience you can then reach the whole of the UK and beyond right so what I've been doing is there's two parts to it I've been doing actually three parts so I've got for Rebel Soapbox, I've got two parts. I've been uh, there's a Facebook page called the Stay In on um, yeah on Facebook. Um, I've been doing a kind of fortnightly thing for them, and it's a bit um, a pre-recorded, you know, four or five performers. Um, it's about it's about an hour long, something like that. Um, which the format really works. Um, 
the issue is I think the novelty is wearing off for a lot of online gigs because I think mm. there's been so many of them. Uh, so the viewing's dropped off a little bit, but it's trying to, I'm trying to engage people who don't realize that they like poetry. It's not about, you know, that's what Rebel Soapbox is for. It's not, it's for people who aren't necessarily, don't think they like poetry, and then they hear the spoken word that we've got, and then they realize, oh, actually, it's just storytelling, or it's comedy, or it's, you know, it's something different. The other thing I've got going on is um, on Instagram Live every two weeks, um, I do Rebel Soapbox conversations with poets. So I'll have two poets on every week, um, and they'll do a 15, 20 minute set live on in, on the Rebel Cookbox Instagram feed. And then I'll have a chat with them afterwards. So have 10, 15 minute chat with them afterwards. Just about their like writing process, how they're getting on in the weird times, you know, all those things. Um, and that's been really lovely because again, it's kind of the same kind of thing, you know, like the stuff that you're doing where you talk to people, you kind of understand where they're coming from. Um, it's not just their work, you know, it's about yeah. them as well. So um, so I thought it'd be interesting to talk to different poets and find out what the pro different people's process was. Because uh, I'm interested in it, because I yeah. find kind of, you know, I'm not someone who can just sit down and be like, I'm going to write for two hours. This is my writing time. You know, it's, it's not like that. My brain doesn't work like that. Some people's does, like some people's brains do work like that. Mine definitely doesn't. So it's been interesting to kind of understand how other people work as well. It sounds like it's been a bit of an opportunity, really, this lockdown, because, I mean, you know, you've been able to, I think one of the things you mentioned earlier was this, this trying to bring poetry to a different audience. So by going online, you're able to really work at that a, a lot more. Um, you're able to get on Instagram, you're able to have conversations, you're able to open up these conversations so that people are exposed a bit more. Do you, do you, do you, do you think that's working? Do you think, do you think um, people are coming over, people are recognising or, or looking at poetry in a different way because you're going online? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I think there's a lot of, there's, there's loads of spoken word nights and poetry nights that are going online. Um, and I think that we're all kind of doing this, that same thing because there, there is, you know, there's there's old school poetry, which is all the birds and trees and, the, you know, yeah. um, there's also poetry to form, which I just don't write to form. Um, I'm a bit haphazard. Um, one, I didn't study poetry. Uh, I've only started writing, but also I'm dyslexic as a motherfucker. <laughs> um, so, um, so for me, it's like a lot of storytelling and it's kind of, uh, to make people smile yeah. um, the thing with spoken word is is that it is a, it can be a mixture of a lot of different things and actually the more that I'm, I'm getting into it and understanding it the question is what is poetry right because poetry isn't just one thing it's not about writing couplets it can be about a lot of different things right so um, you can have freeform poetry which is the majority of the stuff I do um, and um, and yeah, so it, it's kind of getting people's head around that. I think it's, I think it's working. I mean, certainly the people that I know, like um, my friends and um, kind of acquaintances who have come to come along or kind of watch my stuff, they're, they're kind of a little bit like, wow, I didn't realize that was, that was what put like kind of or a spoken word would be like, you know, um, and people generally really enjoy it. The people who've come along to the one and one -tees, um, lots of people like stay back and are kind of like, you know, thanks so much for that. I didn't realize I've never been to a spoken word night before, you know, so, so if we can kind of shift people's opinions on what poetry or spoken word is, then yes, we're doing a job. <laughs> What's, uh, one thing I've noticed as, as we've been talking, you know, the, the, the term spoken word and poetry is sort of being used quite interchangeably. What, what's mm -hmm. the, is there a difference between them or is, or is does spoken word encompass a whole lot of things is, is there a definition that you could place on them? I mean I am not an expert the, my definition of it certainly is isn't all that matters the ultimate <laughs> definition um, I think the thing with spoken words is it can be anything from storytelling to uh, to poetry right so you, you have page page poetry I'm in the throes of, at the moment to try and writing a collection of poems right to try and get it published um, but and I've been working with an, ed an, an editor um, because I'm go I'm looking at it going it does the is the my work that I've written for spoken word does it translate to the page because is it my energy 
and my intonation that, that yeah, carries right. through? Or will somebody read that and say and get the same feeling as they would if they heard me? If that makes sense. Right? It does, absolutely. Yes. So so I think page poetry is probably I think probably more stringent in the um in form or I think you've got to relook at how you uh how you word how you how I would word a poem versus how I would say it. So yeah. I'm trying to I'm now, I'm now learning about page poetry. <laughs> so I don't know. I think there's spoken word poetry. I think that there's. I mean I don't. I mean there's spoken word poetry. There's storytelling. Spoken word can be anything that is spoken. I suppose that's yeah. kind of yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, we're going to leave it leave it there. Thanks for talking uh, to Art Online. Thanks for talking oh, nice to us. Nice to see you. And you. See you later. Bye. Take care, everyone. Bye.